Rebuilding a Stuart Models twin launch model steam engine, and this is part 11. Making the crank pins and fitting the crankshaft together. Before I can make the crank pins, I have to remove the four jaw chuck that I used in the last episode. And as usual, I got a comment saying I was doing it wrong. And I don't think I'm doing it wrong at all. For both fitting and removing chucks from the lathe, you can't beat one of these. This is an English medieval knight's axe, dating from the 13th century. This one, of course, is a replica. I'd never use a real one, because it would be far too expensive. This axe is part of my modest collection of medieval weapons of mass destruction. This is very nasty indeed. No matter which part of this contacts someone, it's going to really hurt. Ouch, I've just cut my finger. I think I'd better put this away for now before I do any more damage. This is how I normally fit and remove chucks from the lathe. It's a piece of hardwood that I have in a drawer underneath the lathe. It doesn't damage the chuck jaws. I don't want to use a spanner or a piece of metal bar. And my chucks are all okay. They're in good condition. Particularly this one because I never used it until the other day. And before I put the three jaw chuck back onto the lathe, I'm going to clean up the thread on the spindle. I'm using my small paintbrush. By the way, some people use an airline to blast away the swarf from parts of a lathe. This is not a good idea in my opinion, because particles of swarf can actually hit you in the face. And even though I hope you're wearing safety glasses, it is possible for pieces of swarf to get behind the safety glasses and then of course hit you in the eye and your eyeball will fall out. And even worse than that, pieces of swarf could get into parts of the lathe where they can cause a lot of damage to the lathe itself. So be warned, do not use compressed air for blowing swarf all around your workshop. A small 1 inch brush, or for bigger machines a 2 inch brush, is adequate for removing most of the swarf from areas of the machine tool that you don't want swarf to be. Once the chuck is securely tightened onto the headstock spindle, it's time to use it. This short piece of silver steel, which is 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, is good to be used to make two of the crank pins. And the first thing to do is to take a very fine facing cut across the end of the piece of steel. This clip shows me using some coarse sandpaper to remove the burr from the end. I've already used my micrometer to get an accurate length of the crank pin required. I'm just checking it so I can show you it on the ruler, and it's just under three quarters of an inch. And this clip shows the parting off process. It's very speeded up, I would not normally part off at this speed when parting off steel and I would also use lubricant, but on these videos I tend not to. Here is a top tip when parting off. You have a choice, you can part off the piece of metal and then spend 10 minutes foraging about in the chip tray, looking for the piece of metal, or you can use a piece of tube like this to catch it. And the other reason of course is, after parting off the piece of metal is very hot indeed, and I've burnt myself so many times. Health and safety warning, not about burning yourself. It's a health and safety warning about filing in the lathe. Be very careful when doing this. I don't recommend that you do it anyway, but I do it because I am stupid. If you feel the need to file in the lathe to remove sharp edges, bearing in mind a 90 degree angle is razor sharp, then be very careful. And always make sure that the file has a proper handle on it, not just a sharp pointed tang. Otherwise, you may impale yourself on the file. Crank pin number one is ready for service, and now it's crank pin number two. I cut this one slightly longer, so I'm just having a bit of fun facing off more than I need to. Today is Saturday the 27th of May, and it's 10 to 5, and I'm sat in my recording studio, and after having edited together all of the video clips that I recorded earlier today, I'm now voicing them over. And I never use a script that would take too long to type the script out, so I do it in real time, I just talk to the computer whilst watching the pictures on screen. This takes considerable time, and sometimes I do actually lose the power of coherent speech. And sometimes when there's a dead area on the video, like when I'm doing things like this, just micrometering these pieces of metal, I can't really say much about that, I will sort of tell a joke or something. And I'm really puzzled about a joke I told a while back. Well, it wasn't even a joke, really. It was just a comment about going to the doctors and the potential embarrassment involved in having a hemorrhoid inspection. Or a hemorrhoid examination, I should say. This, by the way, was not truth. It was just an observation. But what really made me laugh was a viewer took the time to write in and say, 
Why would the GP be embarrassed by looking at hemorrhoids? And I just never got that logic. It's time to put everything together now. No more messing about making bits and pieces. But the first thing I'm going to do is use some Scotch Bright. This green stuff is called Scotch Bright, and it is like an abrasive scouring pad, really. It's just a bit coarser than the one you would wash your dishes with. And the reason for using this Scotch Bright is to just roughen up the ends of the crank pins. This will give a good key for the Loctite. And talking about Loctite, here it is. This is 603, which is a bearing retainer. Very good stuff. It does have a shelf life, so make sure you don't use some really old stuff. This is a new bottle. And it's time to stick it together. I can't do quite a lot of clever videoing. Well, I never do much clever videoing anyway. But if I dawdle about adjusting the camera, checking the focus, etc, etc, then the Loctite is going to set. Then I'm going to be stuck with the crank pins in the wrong place. All I'm currently doing is fixing the crank pins into the crank webs, being very careful to put them in the right way round, and then I thread the crank shaft through the holes, and I really am being careful not to get any Loctite on the crank shaft itself because if this sticks at this point, I'm going to have to heat it all up to separate everything. Once the Loctite holding the crank pins into the crank webs is thoroughly set, the crank webs can be removed from the piece of crankshaft, and then it's over to the belt sander, this is the one inch belt sander, to just clean up the edge of the crank webs. I'm not bothered about doing the top and bottom of the crank webs, they will be rounded as a final operation once the crankshaft is finished. This is a very harmonious job. Under no circumstances must there be any binding of any of these parts on the main crankshaft. For instance, if you're having to force the crank webs onto the main piece of crankshaft, they'll go on there okay. But when you cut out the piece of crankshaft between the crank webs, the crankshaft is likely to distort, and the crankshaft itself will not run true when it's fastened into the main bearings of the engine's bed plate. To assemble the crank webs on the main crankshaft, I'm using my lathe bed, because I do know that that is flat. And once I put the first pair of crank webs on, I go and have a cup of tea. Then I come back, and I put the other pair on at exactly 90 degrees to the first pair. And there we have it, a crankshaft. Do not quickly rush in and start drilling to pin it and banging it about. Let the Loctite cure. I'm going to leave this for 24 hours, then I will pin it and cut out the piece of crankshaft in between the crank webs. And to finish this episode, here's a small amount of painting. A viewer commented on my choice of red for the inside part of the base, and he was right, it really did look horrible. So I'm painting it black. I couldn't really end this episode on painting. I had to make sure that the new crankshaft rotated in the bearings, and it does indeed, it's a really good fit. I'll see what it's like when I pin it and cut out the centres from between the crank webs. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.